The ignition switch is a fundamental control component within any vehicle's electrical system. Its primary purpose is to distribute electrical power to various circuits based on the key or button position selected by the driver. This includes energizing the starter motor, enabling the ignition and fuel systems, and powering accessories such as the radio and climate control. In modern vehicles, especially those manufactured after 2000, the ignition switch also interacts with electronic control modules like the ECU, engine control unit, and the BCM, body control module, often through digital communication networks such as CAN bus. Whether dealing with a classic car using a simple keyed switch or a modern vehicle equipped with a push-button start system, understanding how ignition switch wiring functions is essential for proper diagnostics, repairs, or modifications. Typically, several wires connect to the ignition switch, each serving a distinct purpose. The first is the battery power supply wire, which provides a constant 12V directly from the battery to the switch. This wire is usually red or red with a white stripe and connects to a terminal labeled BIAT, B plus or 30. This wire maintains 12 volts in all key positions, off, ACC, run, and start, since it is the primary power feed into the switch. The second wire is the accessory wire, responsible for powering secondary electrical loads such as the radio, interior fan, and wipers. It is commonly yellow, brown, or pink, and connects to a terminal marked ACC. This wire only receives 12V when the key is in the ACC or run position and goes dead during the start position to reduce electrical load on the battery. The ignition or run wire is perhaps the most critical as it powers the ignition coils, fuel system, sensors, and in modern vehicles, the engine control module. This wire typically appears in colors like pink, dark green, or orange, and is attached to a terminal labeled IGN or IGN1. It carries 12V in both the run and start positions to ensure continuous power delivery during cranking and engine operation. Some vehicles have a second ignition circuit, IGN2, used to isolate high current systems like the fuel pump or climate control. Another vital wire is the starter wire, also known as the solenoid trigger wire. It sends a 12 levo signal to the starter relay or solenoid only when the key is in the start position. This wire is usually purple, yellow with a red stripe, or white with a red stripe, and it connects to a terminal labeled start or S. When activated, it briefly carries 12 volts to engage the starter motor and crank the engine. Once the key is released, this circuit drops back to zero volts. Some ignition systems also include a ground wire, though this is more common in electronic or digital ignition switches, where the control module needs a direct reference to chassis ground. The ground wire is almost always black and connects to a terminal marked GND. This wire remains at zero volts at all times and ensures proper circuit logic in keyless or push start systems. In a traditional keyed ignition system, such as those used in early 1990s sedans, the switch typically has four or five terminals. The battery input connects directly to the BAET terminal, while three outputs lead to the ACC, IGN, and start circuits respectively. In the off position, only the BAT terminal is live. In ACC, the accessory circuit is powered along with BAT. The run position energizes both IGN and ACC circuits, and during start, BAT, IGN, and start terminals are active, although the ACC terminal may be disabled momentarily to reduce load on the battery. Modern vehicles with push-button start systems differ significantly. The driver's input goes to a start and a stop button, which communicates with the BCM. The BCM, in turn, sends digital signals to the ECU and controls various relays that manage power to ACC, IGN, and start circuits. These systems often eliminate direct mechanical key positions and instead emulate off ACC run and start states through software logic. In such systems, traditional wire colors are often replaced or supplemented by digital signal lines, such as CAN High Low or LIN Bus. Power delivery to components is usually managed by solid state devices within the BCM or ECU rather than direct switch terminals. Motorcycle ignition switches are typically simpler and operate in a two or three position format off, on, and sometimes park or ACC. 
These switches often control only the ignition coils and lighting circuits. A common wiring configuration includes a red wire for battery input, a black or brown wire for ignition output, and possibly a green ground wire or a blue-yellow accessory output for lights. In these applications, the switch functions more like a high-current, on-off control without any digital components. Wiring color codes and configurations vary widely across manufacturers and production eras. Older domestic vehicles from the 70s through 90s typically used consistent color schemes. Red for BAT, pink for IGN, purple for START. Japanese and European models sometimes follow different conventions, with DEN standard wiring where black can indicate switched ignition power, and brown often signifies ground. In modern vehicles, manufacturer-specific service manuals are crucial to identify correct wire functions and locations due to the integration of electronic modules and non-standard color codes. When diagnosing ignition switch wiring problems, common symptoms include no crank conditions, where the start wire never receives voltage, intermittent power loss to ignition or accessories, suggesting loose connections or internal switch failure, or the inability to turn the key at all, mechanical fault. A digital multimeter is your most important diagnostic tool. Always begin by disconnecting the battery before accessing switch terminals to prevent short circuits. Once safe, reconnect the battery and carefully probe each wire with the key in different positions. In the off position, only the battery input should show 12V. As you turn the key, confirm which wires become hot and at which stages. This confirms or rules out internal switch faults. When testing, avoid backfeeding power into ignition circuits or jumpering wires unless you're certain of their function. Doing so can damage sensitive modules or trigger immobilizer systems. Always test in a controlled, grounded manner using proper tools and procedures. For vehicle-specific wiring details, the best sources are factory service manuals, which provide detailed connector pinouts and wire color information. Professional databases like AllData, Mitchell One, or Identifix are widely used in repair shops and often contain up-to-date schematics. For DIY enthusiasts, Haynes and Chilton manuals can provide sufficient detail, especially for older or less electronically complex vehicles. Enthusiast forums, wiring diagram repositories, and online service portals are also valuable resources.